I'm down for genre challenge if you want to, but we can also do crossover chicken. I'm fine with either one. Um, it'll take me a while to boot up my laptop to have um, information on something that already exists in front of me. So let's yeah, go yeah. with genre challenge. Let me get my dice real quick. Like. Okay. All right. I have the dice. Let me pull up my note that tells me um, uh, what I'm doing real quick. What each number represents. Yeah, yeah. Random genre challenge. There we go. All right. For listeners, if this is your first time encountering this type of thing we do, me and Brandon are going to come up with a pitch for any sort of um, entertainment media, be it like a script for a movie or a comic book or a miniseries or a novel um, or a dirty magazine. Ooh. Uh, whatever it is. Um, we are coming up with the genre completely randomly by the uh, use of two six-sided dice. I have a black die, which um, determines the setting, and a white die, which determines the genre. So I'm about to roll the two of them together, shake them next to the microphone so people hear. And then from there, we pitch a a, a pitch based on those. Yeah, yeah. We, we, yeah, the pitch is based on those two factors all right <laughs> okay brandon um i'm gonna read this off to you and you tell me if you want me to re-roll one of these because this is gonna be another one that sounds a little generic okay for the black die setting i got a six which is western western okay and for the genre die I got a one, which is action. Action. <laughs> so you just let so, me know if you want to re if if you want me to re-roll one or both of those. Okay. Um. Hmm. Maybe. Ah, oh, it's so tough because I I I kind of do want to re-roll one, but I'm trying to figure out which one. Oh, that's tough. We can re-roll both if you like. We don't have to um, we don't have to stick with it if we really aren't feeling either of those. Okay. Cause yeah, I, I I am slightly feeling western if it was something else. And I'm slightly feeling action if it was something else. To just like throw that all out, I'd say re-roll both, maybe. All right, re-roll both. If that's all right. Okay, yeah. Forgive us, listener. Um, no, oh, geez. All right, I'm vetoing this next one because this is effectively what we did last week. Oh, it's um, I got oh no, it's it's not exactly the same, but it's similar oh, because okay. we went for a romantic comedy last week. And mm -hmm. I just rolled a one on the black die, which is present day Earth, and a five on the genre die, which is romance. So okay, yeah. we'll here's what I'm gonna do. Um, this time, I I will have you just pick one. Should I re-roll the black die or the white die? Okay, black die being with... setting, white die being genre. So present day Earth, romance. Um. Reroll the genre. Okay. Oh, uh, that fell on the floor and landed in a blanket and went on an angle. I was going to count it, but it, there were too many factors to that one. Too many obstacles. There we go. Three, crime. Okay. Present day Earth, crime. Now, crime is pretty broad. It can be like a police procedural like investigation, like seven um or it can be uh like the godfather like a mob thing like crime is right. crime is as long as crime is important to the story then i then we can roll with it okay hmm. i have an idea i it'd be cheating to do it so i'm probably going to put it aside it's an idea that i have for uh a later anthology comic ah okay yeah 
<laughs> cheater, cheater. Yeah, it'd be cheating if I use that one. Um, so let's see. Present day crime. Okay, how about this? Let, let's think. So what are some big present day crimes? Let's think about that. I would say human trafficking, but that would never get greenlit in Hollywood. <laughs> well, sound they don't they don't like it when you call them out like that. Yeah, that's true. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, you got the the you got fraud and stuff. That's that's so so. Let me think. Modern day crimes. Okay, um, the, the idea, and we can throw this out. Again, this is just spitballing ideas so it can get our brains going. The idea I was thinking was, it, it's present day crimes. Yeah, uh, You don't see this crime that much anymore because they have been cracking down on it. It is still kind of a thing, not really. Um, but title popped in my head of the last bank robbers where <laughs> it's not just like they they rob one bank it's like no no this is like this is like 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 uh uh did jesse james rob banks i think so i think he also held up trains okay yeah yeah, yeah. he he robbed trains that's what it was well some of those guys back in those days how they were just notorious for just going around and robbing multiple banks. This is present day where it's like a, a group that is going around robbing multiple banks, which sounds very stupid for present day. But you you do that to where like, I mean, present day, I don't know if we have any like bank robbers in the sense that like they're robbing more than one or two banks yeah like any career bank robbers yeah yeah like like that's what i'm saying is like like the criminals could be like career bank robbers interesting modern day career bank robbers interesting because it doesn't have to be that, but I'm I'm kind of trying to think like what were popular crimes back then yeah. that like now today aren't as popular because of, of technology and security and stuff like that. But these criminals are trying to do those old timey crimes and are kind of getting away with it. Yeah. It doesn't have to be bank robbery, but I'm just trying to think of that. Uh, yeah, I'm having a hard time thinking of anything other than a bank robbery that's like an old timey crime that's even still around. You know what I mean? Like yeah, that would even yeah. still be possible. Hold on. Old timey crimes. <laughs> Here we go. Reddit knows what I'm looking for. What's a crime that existed a hundred years ago that doesn't exist today? <laughs> oh, <laughs> this isn't exactly what I thought. The top one was it used to be illegal for a woman to drive a car in Tennessee unless a man was running in front of the car while waving a red flag. What? Well, there we go. <laughs> here's here's what we do. Uh, okay okay sorry excuse me um i turned i turned away uh, <laughs> um it's uh the entire movie is about a woman in the modern day driving a car in tennessee without a man running in front of her waving a red flag is is someone trying to like bring that law back no like, hey she can't do that no <laughs> or or is it like a a what if universe where it's like this law has always been around and is still around to present day no i don't i don't think we can make a movie out of that okay let's see 
Okay. 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 Maybe this can get our, our wheels spinning. One of the things I read, well, this one is still on the books, so it technically is still a law, but seeing no one would really get charged with it today, it Before still seems say, fitting. Could we pause real quick so I can um, do some quick texting without like yeah, yeah. the recording? Okay. Sorry yeah, yeah, about no that. Problem. No, you're good. Hold on. Once this loads. So that's actually what I was looking at was some of the weird, strange crimes that still exist. I'm trying to see if I can confirm one. If not, I can I can always do another one. Um, okay, that one's actually pretty good. Let me, let me save that one just in case. Oh, come on, one more. Let me just see. Okay. Let's see. All right. <laughs> I have no idea if this first one is uh is is really real. There's some that are confirming, some that are denying. So, of those very stupid crimes that you see list of and stuff. Um one was this was in Ohio that you couldn't get a fish drunk. Um, no one really acts on it, obviously, because that is very, like, like what I mean is, like, law enforcement never really acts on it because it's, like, stupid. Yeah. But if that happened to be the crime, it becomes so bad. <laughs> Whoever the main character is or whatever, getting these fish drunk to where law enforcement is like, I guess we actually got to do something. But I guess this is why this law was passed. Is like this is getting this is getting out of hand. Like whenever they enacted this law, this must have been the thing that happened that got them to pass this law. It's got to be um, something where he's got like a pet goldfish or something, and like he's the dude, our our main character, whoever it is, is coming home from like let's say okay okay, he uh he's like a college student, like a frat boy college student type of guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, that you see in the early 2000s movies all the time. And yes. um, he was out at a party, you know, getting drunk, um, uh, putting his tongue in, his, in girls' mouths, that sort of thing. And um, uh, and he comes, he comes home drunk, right? And he's yes. got a goldfish. Um, and when he comes home, he's like, Oh man, it was such a good party. But like he he, he comes home and like he had this revelation that like he's lonely, right? His fish is his only friend. And, yeah. Um, and so he talks to his fish like it was such a good party. You loved it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and he's like, here, I'll give you a little drink because he's still drunk and he doesn't think about yeah. the fact that it's like, like so he here, cheers, cheers, Nemo. Yeah, cheers. And he he pours some beer into uh the fish's fish tank. Mm. And um, the fish swims through it a little bit. And then, like, you see, like, the fish's big, like, black eyes suddenly, like, its pupils dilate until there's nothing but white left. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even though I don't think fish have whites to their eyes, but whatever. Um, yeah, yeah. It's clearly something goofy. And then, like, something happens where the fish does something in its tank that uh, causes, like, a malfunction with the filter or something that... Uh, <laughs> just leads to catastrophe because like the filter would have to be plugged in right like the fish tank is plugged in so right, right. It, like whatever the fish does with the filter because it's drunk uh leads to a power surge and like messes with like the power grid and a bunch of crazy things happen and like they you know they find out like the source is that this drunk college student poured some beer in his fish's fish tank and <laughs> And so then that's when you get the police being like, I guess this is why the law, this law exists. Yeah. <laughs> so he's got to go on the run. And obviously his fish is dead. And he's like, my only friend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so now he's got to go on the run. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and <laughs> I just thought it's so great. So, some fun, like puns. It's like, oh, so this is what they mean when they say drink like a fish. <laughs> 
Because that is a saying. Yeah, yeah. He drinks like a fish. Yeah. And so, yeah, like, and then the, the rest of the movie is him, like, going on the run and, like, uh, he crosses state lines, so it becomes a federal issue. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you, you have, like, e- each time, so, so it starts off, like, yeah, you have this thing that, like, this accidental thing that causes, like, this, this mass thing in this little town, basically. And like, yeah, they they investigate and realize like, oh, like, I guess this is because of this is because of the fish and the fish getting drunk and like, like you said, I they're like, I guess this is why that law was enacted. It was like, never know what can happen with a drunk fish. Um, and so yeah, they're they're trying to track him down, um, and it, it's not it's not that bad in terms of the cops, like trying to find him and stuff. Like likely what would happen is like maybe a misdemeanor charge and like a big fine or something. But like he is like, like so worried (laughs) (laughs) to where he's on the run and him being on the run is what like boosts the whole, like, like, him being on the run boost his GTA stars. Yeah. The cop much. stars basically. Um, to where and it you know starts what? off as basically one star, but like him leaving him leaving like the county then leads to like the 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 cops in the county and the town like calling up like the, cops the district the essentially. And silver spoon. <laughs> but but them like calling up and like telling that other county like what happened and the other county's like wait what there's a law against <laughs> drunken fish and they're like yes yes we know but we know why it was enacted now like we, <laughs> we need you to to help us find him he's out of our jurisdiction can you help us find him and so the that district then goes and is looking for him and then like you said eventually he's out of state and then that leads to a whole federal thing <laughs> and so and so to to where it's like snowballing, like like yeah, all of this I, could have been I, avoided, I, like I, I, at I, the I, beginning, it could have been avoided, and it snowballs to where like yeah, he's on like the news and stuff, like like wanted on the news and stuff like that. And I have the perfect like premise that carries the whole movie through. Okay. So, firstly, though, uh, before I get into that, we need a name for our main character because um, mm-hmm. I have an idea for a title. Okay. Well, what what's the idea for the title? Because that could help um, us come up with the name. The the true crimes of main character's name. Okay, I gotcha. So, like a first and last name. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, given name and surname. His full Christian name. Okay, it needs to be like a a stereotypical fratish college name, possibly. Yeah. Because it, it plays into like like the title sounds kind of serious of like the true crimes of and then it's like Chad Bradley, yeah, like Chad Bankston, tra- Chad Bradley. I guess it's going to Chad. We have the first name, yeah, Chad, <laughs> Chad, yeah. Chad, Chad Brixton, Chad uh, Abernathy, Chad. That's too cumbersome. Uh, yeah, yeah, Chad. Uh, Ferguson, Chad. Basic last names. Yeah, ba- yeah, basic white guy last names. Yeah. Chad Smith, Chad Johnson, Chad Williams, uh, Chad Brown, Chad Jones, Chad Garcia. Maybe Chad, Chad Brown. I like, I like Chad Brown. Chad Maybe. Brown? Okay. Yeah, Brown. yeah, I like Chad Brown. Chad Brown sounds good. All right, the true crimes of Chad Brown. That's perfect. Yeah. So what it is? Oh, oh, here's, the, <laughs> here's this. This is like like very. I don't know. It, it, it's 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 ultimately a funny thing. Um, I'd like it if it doesn't have to be the exact colors. If he, a lot of times, at least like when we see him, he's wearing like like a yellow polo. <laughs> Um, and <laughs> why? Maybe, 
like I'm not saying it, it's not Charlie Brown, obviously. <laughs> like, this is this is like this is like frat Charlie Brown, basically. Because <laughs> because I like the idea, like 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 only once or twice really you you hear him saying as like he's like driving away, like why does this always happen to me? Like like oh, stuff like grief. that, basically. Yeah. <laughs> His goldfish's name is Snoopy. <laughs> or Woodstock. Um, <laughs> what's, what's the... So, because so, cause it's Chad Brown, what's like a good uh, change to the name, like uh, uh, to, to the goldfish, let me think, that deals with Snoopy or slash Woodstock? Um, uh, well, uh, oh goodness, well, what's another music festival for doing Woodstock? And uh, <laughs> But I, I got uh, a good idea for the Snoopy one. His, his fish, his goldfish's name is Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg. There we go. Yeah, yeah. that that works perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> his goldfish, goldfish is Snoop, Snoop Dogg. Dogg, and he's got like yeah. a bunch of Snoop Dogg and like four twenty posters all over his room. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which means obviously we have to get Snoop Dogg to like make an original track for the movie. Um, oh yeah, for sure. But uh, and probably appear in at least one scene. Yeah. And so that Chad can be like Snoop Dogg. <laughs> oh, um, but anyway, so here's here's like the premise of the movie that carries it through. I've got it perfectly. Okay. So it starts with the accidental commitment of one of those weird crimes that for some reason is still on the books. Mm-hmm. And every time he like goes to a new state in order to escape uh law enforcement he has to commit some other weird crime specific to that state to get away yeah 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 eventually he makes it down to uh he makes it down to louisiana and uh he has to escape like like the police head not saying he's in police headquarters or whatever like like this crime is it's illegal to send a surprise pizza in Louisiana. Basically like sending an unprompted pizza yeah. is considered harassment. So, oh my gosh. So he finds out that the FBI is staking him out while he's staying in like new Orleans or something like to hide yeah. out and lay low. And in order to distract them so he can get away, he sends them a surprise pizza. Cause he finds out where they are, like where they're staking him out from. Oh, but okay. So here's the thing. I like it if like yes he does this like like with these crimes but he doesn't know that they're crimes. These are just <laughs> ways he's trying to like keep going but yeah, he's that's, just that's racking was, up. Like, who's, who's yeah, yeah, he's just racking up a crime. Yeah, yeah, he's just racking up the <laughs> this weird criminal record without knowing it. <laughs> the weirdest rap sheet in the world on a federal level. Yes. Oh, that is perfect. By committing local state crimes. <laughs> yeah. So so where did he start again? Was it was it Ohio? Ohio. Was it? Ohio, okay. So what's bes- what's between Ohio and Louisiana? The American education oh, like, system failed me horribly on my own nation's like geography. So many states. So let me pull it out. <laughs> it's like half of the United States right there. Let's see. And he doesn't have to stop in every state he passes through. Right, right, yeah. But yeah, if he can get like at least five or six of these where he's like, he's trying to slip law enforcement or he's just simply like just just doing his thing, but he, <laughs> he, he triggers one of these weird crimes. Okay, let me see. Okay, Ohio. Okay, okay. And he always That's has not, to okay. do it in a way that they would know about it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, like so we could say visible. Oh, this this kind of works. We could say like um uh for some reason he sees it <laughs> I, I guess he's like he's like going down and it keeps going worse and worse. Like first it's just him trying to go to the next state, which is Kentucky. Um, but it keeps getting worse and worse to where eventually he's just like, well, I'm just going to go to Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so with that trajectory, you have from Ohio to Kentucky, uh, to Tennessee, 
to Mississippi to Louisiana to Texas and then Mexico. All right. And I like that it's a lot of these southern states too, so it's even weirder. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say like you you're you're definitely getting like the perfect like uh spectrum of bizarreness in the United States from uh, yeah. from that that specific set. The only thing you're missing for true weirdness is Florida, but that's far that's too far off to the east for uh yeah, to yes. go to Mexico. Yeah, there there's multiple different weird crimes for each state. I'm on one article that only has one per, but for some of these states, when we're actually sitting down and writing it, we can like do more research into it. Yeah, because I definitely yeah, want to write this movie now. Yeah, yeah. I want to write Louisiana. This. I want to write Paper Thin. I want to write The Hogtied yeah. Heart. I want I want to write all these. <laughs> Let me see if there's one more because because the the one that popped up for Kentucky on this website it's like yeah we can find a better one for Kentucky. Let me see if I can find one more for one of those what, states. That I what popped up for Kentucky? Ah, uh, hold on, let me go back to it. It seems a little soon for him to somehow do this. So in Kentucky, a woman cannot marry the same man four times. Um. Like him getting like entangled in that crime. Yeah. Seems like it would happen further okay, down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one's a little too big. Yeah, yeah. Hold on, I'm scrolling through really quick. Let's see. Do <laughs> Unless you have a whole thing where, like, he first tries to hide out in Kentucky because it's just the next state over, and then, like, has this really bizarre on again, off again relationship with this girl that he meets there for, like, over the course of, like, a week and, like, marries her three times and then finally leaves after the third time. But then the movie ends with, like, him somehow being exonerated of all of his crimes in America and coming back and then going back to Kentucky and marrying her the fourth time. And then they're like, oh no. That was the fourth one. <laughs> and then the credits start rolling. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Tennessee, possibly do something with this. But I feel like Tennessee has some weirder ones. I mean, it's Tennessee. Yeah. Um, but this one that popped up on this list is in Tennessee, it's illegal to share your Netflix password. Um, yeah, Netflix made it so that that's the case everywhere, though. So Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, this was passed back in 2011, so I guess they were one of the first ones to do it. But yeah, I'm sure there's some weirder ones. I mean, it's it. not like legally illegal. Netflix just put things in place where you, it's harder to do it now. Yeah, yeah. This one seems so weird. I, I figured this would be across the board, but this is what pops up on this website. In Texas... You can't sell a human eye. <laughs> yeah, you know, you'd okay. think that would be just like illegal in all 50. Yeah. So he's going to have to sell a human eye at some point. <laughs> that, that's, that's going to, that's, maybe that's he can commit more than trying... one crime per state because in some of these. Because some of these are like yeah, yeah. small but weird enough that it's like, I feel like he needs another one there. But that one yeah, definitely yeah. needs to be there. Like selling and, a human eye. Texas... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's that's right before Mexico. So we're like two thirds into at least two thirds into the movie. Yeah, like when this happens. So this if, is like if not like five ending. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. There, there's there's a bunch of them. We would uh, narrow it down in terms of writing, but that is that is the gist right there. So so what's the ending? So we kind of had the gist of the movie. What is the ending for it? Okay. I kind of like the, um, he somehow gets exonerated, then goes back to Kentucky and accidentally commits another weird crime. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, well, I, um, I like that where, where like, like, but if, we'll need an actual climax another... that leads to it. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I was going to say, like, like, it's, it's the ending. It gets exonerated. And yeah, he goes back to one of these states and, is just living life and 
yeah, he he accidentally commits one of these crimes, and it doesn't have to be exactly this, yeah. but it's almost like a, a look in camera type moment where it's like, oh no, not again! Like he obviously it's not yeah, yeah. that. And then Snoop Dogg starts playing over the yeah yeah. You got the credits rolling and yeah. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I I legit think that could be a, a good yeah. So how does how does he get exonerated though? We need at least that worked out, and then we okay. can call it. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Hmm. He was going down to Mexico. Does he somehow like like stop a big cartel thing accidentally? And they're like, well, like you helped us out a good bit. I guess we can help you out with all these these random <laughs> laws and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, one of those weird um you get off on good behavior endings that they do in these sorts of movies, which is absolutely not how that works in the real yeah, world. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, like that's how Disturbia ends. Did you do you ever see Disturbia? Yeah, I'm with I actual camera exactly shadows, how it but... ends. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he's you know been on house arrest for the whole movie, right? And, right. Um, he the the climax of the movie is that like you know his neighbor actually spoilers for Disturbia by the way in case anybody wanted to see that movie. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, his his neighbor who he is suspected of being a serial killer through the whole movie actually turns out to be a serial killer and um, yeah, yeah. kidnaps his mother. So he has to hop the fence over, thus breaking his house arrest and go over and fight the serial killer and it ends with him like uh getting the guy in the chest with garden shears which is like for a pg-13 movie viscerally uncomfortable to yeah yeah <laughs> think about um because like they put like, like like a crunch sound effect like he cut the guy's sternum in there it was again for a pg-13 movie it's unexpected um especially in that era yeah. Actually, no, I feel like PG-13 got away with being a little edgier back then. Anyway. Um, yes, but like he, 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 you know, kills a person. Yes, it's a serial killer and he was defending his mother, but he still broke house arrest and trespassed to do it. Like, yeah, he had reasonable doubt and it was a defended person. I don't know if this is how it works in the real world, though, but like the movie I ends with like... Him, like the, the movie ends with him like being let out of house arrest on good behavior, basically, for killing yeah, a serial killer to save his mom. Yeah, I don't think that would happen. But yeah, I, I don't think he would face like more like trouble yeah. or crimes after this. But I think yeah, yeah, I, I feel like he would, would still be on house arrest. The rest of its sentence, though. Yeah, yeah, exactly. In the in the real world, like obviously a human life is in danger, and one of your own loved ones at that. And if you witness that it's you know there's a genuine danger there, then yeah, you should be allowed to deal with it, even if it yes, does yes. mean trespassing to do it. Um, but you still got to serve that time before yeah. you were the hero. Yeah, yeah. Like, you're still got to serve your sense. So, yeah, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, and honestly, it's house arrest, right? It Having that last little bit of realism in there wouldn't have hurt the movie that much. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, he was going to get out at some point. They were going to let him out. Yeah. Yeah, let, let him serve the rest of his sentence. Don't have this it's, weird BS ending. Yeah, oh, it's still me. the same movie where, where they where they let him out on good behavior, and then he gets to go yeah, and kiss yeah. the pretty girl. Yeah, it's still the same movie, and you can still have that where she just comes over. Yeah, and he kisses her. <laughs> yeah, or he he's on the porch or whatever, and he kisses yeah. her like like. <laughs> or like just skip to when his sentence is up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, and then and just say five girl. months later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Shia, Shia LaBeouf was like kind of the go-to actor for all those like edgy teenage boy wish fulfillment movies. Yeah, yeah. You know, Transformers and Disturbia and all that. What I've done? done. I punched myself. Because it makes me come. Okay. Um. <laughs> I grab my shears. I shove them in the neighbor's <laughs> sternum. <laughs> He's bleeding out. But it's okay because he's a serial killer. And I saved my mom. 
but I'm still on house arrest. It's kind of messed up, but hey, I'll serve my time. <laughs> I have a sentence to finish. I'll be a law abiding from this day. Uh, <laughs> I promise that's true. <laughs> I can't remember what crime I did. It was assault. To make me on house arrest. It was it was assault. Oh. Aggravated I promise assault. I won't do that again. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like uh I think just shy of being 18, which is the only reason he didn't go to a uh, regular prison. Did they say who he assaulted? It was his uh Spanish teacher, I think. Ooh. In the movie, yeah. Because the because the movie starts with um him and his dad on a fishing trip and then like uh they get like t boned or something by a car like they something suddenly happens where like there's a car accident and his dad dies and then it cuts to however long later and um you know he's he's having trouble in a Spanish class because he's understandably quite depressed yeah yeah um and his his Spanish teacher just happened to catch him in like, you know, or on a real bad day and asked him like, what would your father think? And, you know, obviously bring up the dead dads, you know, a, yeah, a yeah. bad idea. So he punched the teacher. I gotcha. And it led to a, a court thing. So that's, that's like the, that's the, the, the setup to disturb you. And so gotcha. he uh, ended up being on house arrest. I'm not a racist. It was just I was sad from my dad. He Being is dead. dead. <laughs> I'm so my Spanish sorry, me Spanish a real teacher. Bad day. <laughs> so I punched him in the face. If you really think about it, I understand that resorting to violence is a bad thing. But, but, I really <laughs> <laughs> but, but I really want to get across. But I really want to get across. It wasn't because he's Hispanic. <laughs> Please hear me out. I don't think it's wrong to be sad. That my dad is dead. <laughs> and angry when people bring him up for no reason. To be honest, I kind of feel like it's on him. That seems like <laughs> inappropriate behavior <laughs> to bring up my dad, 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 we were doing a movie pitch. Yeah, yeah. That's the um, song at the end. <laughs> yeah, the, the 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 true crimes of of Chad Brown. Yeah, the true. Yeah, yeah the he, true he crimes helps crimes of Chad Brown. He helps stop like a cartel thing, like at the last second. Yeah, yeah. Not because he's a racist. No. <laughs> Um, and we don't need to go into detail about what the, what specific cartel operation he would be interfering with. No, yeah, yeah. It, it ultimately <clears throat> became like an accidental thing. Yeah, yeah. But but while he was trying to go from the United States to Mexico, yeah, and yeah, he he happened to help out, and cops were like, "Hey, thanks." And, and all these silly crimes that we've been chasing you for and you've been on the news and like we almost put you on FBI most wanted because of all this wildness. We're going to cut you some slack. So get out there, champ. But remember, there's some pretty stupid crimes out there. So basically, don't do anything in life. Yeah. It could be a crime. Don't worry. There's a there's a girl back in Kentucky I want to see. <laughs> no, and then, again. And then the the priest the priest at the wedding asks him like, "And how many times have you been married to this woman?" Because it's a, uh, um, it's the same priest every time he marries her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
He's like, this is the fourth one. You know that, right? He's like, yeah. And he's like, it's illegal for a woman to marry the same man four times in Kentucky. He's like, what? And he looks into the <laughs> camera. <"Ba-da-da-da-da." laughs> oh, and Snoop Dogg's like his best man at the wedding. and uh... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Snoop Dogg's the one that's like, oh, not again. Faux shizzle. <laughs> it's all good, Chad. It's not all good, Snoop. <laughs> My life is ruined. I promised that nice FBI agent that I <laughs> that I wouldn't commit any more weird crimes. <laughs> Have a have a post credit scene um, <laughs> where uh, he's visiting his wife in jail because technically, based on the wording of that crime, she was the one who yeah, yeah. committed the crime. Um, <laughs> so uh, he's like, don't worry, honey. I got us a great lawyer. Snoop Dogg comes in with, <laughs> with a book. He's like, I got a law degree online. Faux shizzle. <laughs> That'll be that'll be the mid credits rather than the end credits. Yeah, yeah. It'll be the the mid credits, and it continues with the Snoop Dogg song that that it cut out <laughs> to play that scene for. Oh, excuse me. It's perfect. The true crimes of Chad Brown. All right, print the poster. Yes. Starts Friday. Perfect. Ready PG thirteen. Here you go, Hollywood. We got. Means we're gotta... we're allowed one f bomb. <laughs> we got a, a rom com for you. We got a a a crime comedy. A crime comedy. Because there's nothing in the rules that says we aren't allowed to implement the other genres in Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We can put course. other genres, but we do there has to be like a central thing of the genre we do in the challenge. And we did that. The movie is all about crime. It's about dumb crimes. Yeah. Accidental crimes. Awesome. Well, we we ripped Wait, through that one. You're saying that though, accidental crimes. All right. What makes a better title? The true crimes of Chad Brown or the accidental crimes of Chad Brown? Oh. Accidental the accidental crimes of Chad Brown might be better. <clears throat> the true crimes of Chad Brown does sound good like it, it, it the the first half of that makes you think like oh like this is gonna be like serious or whatever <laughs> um but yeah the accidental crimes of chad brown because it is a comedy i think that's a good title for it all righty burn all the old posters print new ones yes the, title <laughs> the accidental crimes of chad brown dang all right, I think that's a I think that's a movie pitch right there. Perfect. We're gonna have to write that someday. Oh yeah. We got so it's the Hogtied Heart, Paper Thin, and the Accidental Crimes of Chad Brown. Yes. That's going to be someday when they're running like uh like triple feature matinees at um uh art house theaters. Those <laughs> those are gonna be the three movies that <laughs> that play. <laughs> 